God has never slept from the foundation of the world. And God is telling us judgment is coming. And is standing near the door. Living a life that matters. His word is going to matter in eternity. Because a wasted life shall serve as a foil for the fire of hell that will torment our souls. When we shall stand before the Lord. today is the mischief of sin. The mischief of sin. The, mis the mischief of sin. 
in the book of Psalm 106. Psalm 106. We are going to read verse 43. Psalm 106 verse 43. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Igbakuko ni ogba won sibe won fi imo won mu binu asire won sile nitori ese won. The Bible says they were brought low for their iniquity. Ibele wi pe are won sile fun ese won. The mischief of sin. Ajalu ese. Sin is dangerous in nature. Ese je ohun to je ohun jamba. And in this passage of the scripture. Ibele ta si kayi. The Bible told us. Ibele so fun wa. That this people were brought down for their iniquity. And devil David sat down the sins of the people of God. David is saw we pe o jese to man down bi Olorun. People David sat down the iniquity of the people of God. Jesus saw it to je David saw it to je ese ti awon eniyan Olorun. The forgetfulness of God. Igbagbe won ni pa ti Olorun. In verse 13 of that Psalm 106. Ni ese keta la bi ti an ka na. Psalm 106 verse 13. Ori David 106 ese keta la. The Bible say they soon forgot his work. They wait, they waited not for his counsel. The Bible says they soon forget his war. One of the sin of the people of God. When God did something for them, when God did a miracle in their life, they are quick to make promise. Lord, I promise you with all my life. Lord, I promise you with all my soul. All the days of my life, I'm going to worship you. All the days of my life, I will worship you in holiness. We deal with God mercy as with flower. When they are fresh, we smell them. We smell them. But after a while, we throw them away because we don't have interest in it again. We can deal with the mercy of God like that and touch when we get to heaven. A woman that was rescued from surgery, it remained a little for the doctor to perform surgery. And she prayed a prayer. Oh Lord, I promise you, if you do not allow me to go through this surgery, I will serve you. In fact, this my son is going to serve you. I give him to you. And before you know it, the doctor came and shook and said there is no need of operation again no need of surgery again when God gave her the son after about five years later when this boy began to grow up he has, she has forgotten that she said this boy is going to work for God and I will make sure that this boy worship you and myself, I will love you with all my life. She, she left the church. She refused to go to church. She refused to study her Bible. She refused to pray. In fact, that boy began to prove stubborn. He will never, she will never correct him. She forget the promise of God. And one day, God reminded her. Do you remember your vow? When you were bound to, to go into operation, you said you are going to serve me with all your life. You said you are going to worship me with all your life. In fact, you said this very son, you are going to teach him my way. Where are those vows? Where are these promises? Where are these promises? Convener, we are this agreement.
agreement. And the woman said in the in, in, in her dream. I'm sorry, that was then. That was then. I'm not sure if I can be able to perform this vow again. And God said, eh, so you mean you can't perform the vow again? Then no problem, I will take the son away. When she woke up from such a terrible dream, she never make any adjustment. They soon forgot his word and they waited not for his counsel. God deliver her, but she forgot the deliverance of God. She began to live a reckless life. When she woke up, she didn't do anything about the dream. She continued in her sin until one day they called her from the school. We lost your son. We lost your son. Your son is gone. Listen to me carefully. If you think you can play game with God, give me this. I will worship you. Give me that. I will live a holy life. But after that you have received it, you run away from God. That they will plead you and pamper you and say, come to service, come to. You said, don't worry, I'm not sure if I'm going to come. And because of this, the Bible says, for their iniquity, they were brought low. We can't deal with God's mercy as we deal with flour. Because it has good odor. You carry it, you smell it, and smell it, and smell it. But after a while, when the leaves begin to dry, you throw it off. And number two, David stayed there on inordinate laws. Inordinate laws. In or the late lost, they have lost of the heart. In verse 14, the Bible says, But lost, lost exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. They are inordinate laws. They begin to lose after the things of the world. This is very common among the children of God. They are not satisfied with God's provision. They are possessed with the spirit of covetousness. When they say this one, how I wish I'm the one. How I wish I'm the one. In fact, God sent them a provision miraculously from heaven. But yet they were not satisfied with God's provision. But lost exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. They were not content with what God has supplied to them. But they will have God to satisfy their lustful heart. He let them have their request. He gave them the request. They plead and plead, we must have this. If you don't give us this, we will go back to Egypt. We don't know that you are such a wicked God that you brought us to this wilderness to make us to suffer. You don't want to give us what we want. Despite how they know that God rained that manna from heaven. God gave them their request. But he gave them in his anger. And he sent leadiness to their soul. He sent leadiness to their soul. And number three. Their idolatry. In verse 19 the Bible says. They made a calf in Horeb. And worshipped the molten image. You are the one that asked God for husband. Lord, if you give me this husband. 
husband. You see how people they reproach me in your life. And they say this one is a child of God. How come she's getting older and she never have husband? And you say, Lord, if you give me this husband, I promise you to serve you with, with my own life. I promise you I will give you my time. I promise you I will be consecrated for your service. And when God gave you the husband, you said, wow, hallelujah, God gave me a husband. After the night of marriage, after celebration of marriage, after anniversary of marriage, then you soon forgot the promise that you have made to God. And the same husband that you have, you ask God, you beg God to give you, the same husband is teaching you to live against the will of God. I will say, well, this is my husband. I have no I have no option than to obey and live against the will of God. You are the one that asks for why. And you say, Lord, if you give me this one, if you give me this one, both of us, we are going to serve you. Both of us will be devoted for your service. I know God gave you the wife. And the wife said, do you know what? I don't think I can, we can still go to that church. I don't think we can still go to that church. Because their message is so boring, holiness every time, heaven, holiness, you know, rapture, hellfire, I don't want to go there. Let us go to Catholic, let's go to Anglican, let us to where they will entertain us. And you said, well, you know, I love you with my life. I will obey you. Let's go together. You ask for a vehicle. You say, Lord, if you give me this vehicle, any time I come to church, I will make sure I pick some members and I drop them at their house. And you pray, sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat. And God see your sincerity. That he gave you. He said, okay, no problem, I gave you. And by the time you got that vehicle, by the time you get that vehicle, then you begin to imagine, now I have vehicle, nobody can talk to me. In fact, my own vehicle beat the one of my pastor. And now you are going home, you see the members trekking to a far distance, you can't pick them, you soon forgot the promise of God. Ah, if that is how you have been living your life, you are not truly a child of God. You are the one that asked for a child. And not by the time God gave you the child. You love that child and God. You give that child time than God. You give him attention and God. And whenever you want to say, you said, Daddy, you know, the trouble of those children, they are too much. Listen to me carefully. If you have been living in idolatry life, what most of us thought is that until when I build a molten image and I begin to bow before you, that is when I am idolater. Your husband can be your idol. Your wife can be your idol. Your work can be your idol. Your vehicle can be your idol. Anything that 
you love most than the word of God than God himself that is your little God you are, you are, you are an idolater as such a person cannot enter the kingdom of God when you are in trouble the person you always no visited force. You said, I know if I tell him, he will help me. You first run to that person before you run to God. That person is your idol. And such a person cannot get to heaven. These people, they idolize what God has given to them. These people, they began to mount image. They begin to bow before image. This is a God that take us out of Egypt. And they will dance and dance and sing and clap before that image. And for this purpose, God disclaimed them. God disclaimed them from being his people. Listen to me carefully. Be, have you been living such life? You, you, you think of the things of the world. You always think about the things of the world. Then you think about heaven. That's your expensive clothes. That have more of your heart. That whenever you are in the church, ah, I never put on this uh, clothes today. When you are in the mid road, you remember, hey, my wristwatch. My wristwatch. You rush back home. If it is your Bible that you forget at home, you will never go. But now your wristwatch. You rush back home. That is your idol. Whatever is your idol is your God. And any God apart from Jehovah God lead to hell. And number four, their unfaithfulness. In verse 24, yeah, they despise the pleasant land. They believe not his word. They do not think about God. They do not think that God is going to subdue their enemy and take them to the promised land. And this unbelief broke forth into murmuring. And for this purpose, they were brought low. God has said, I will do this for you. And because God delayed, you say, I'm not sure if God can even answer again. I'm not sure if God can be faithful to his word again. I'm not sure if God can give me my request again. Because he said, I should wait. I have waited for up to three years now. This is three years. Yet he said, don't worry, I will do it. Don't worry, I will do it. I'm not sure even if I can serve God again. And they ask you to come and lead choruses in the church. You go, you say, eh, the God I want to sing for, he promised me, he never gave me, and pastor is calling me, I should come and sing. Listen to me. Mummy is a great sin in the sight of God. Think of how God rescue your life. Think of how God rescue you from such accident. Think of how God save you from that sickness. That you thought your life will go for it. And yet the Lord preserve your soul. And now by the time they call you to come and do things in the church, you 
you said the person should be able to consider that I am weak now. Sin is the great leveler. It always bring people low. It always bring a family low. It always cut off the pillar of the family. Because of the sin that and his children committed their family was cut off and sin always bring a kingdom law when King Saul sin against God the spirit of God departed from him and sin always break the foundation of the church it always take away the glory of the church. If the pastor is indulging in sin, if the worker they are indulging in sin, it always hinder the glory of God in the church. Then the adversary will begin to inside the church. As the rabbit is going to tread on a dead lion. As the rabbit is going to tread on a dead lion. And the, 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 the adversary will begin to tread upon the church. When they pray, there is a waste of time. When they praise God, the devil will say it's a waste of time. Unless the air can spring out of you, they begin to insult God in the church because the church has lost its strength, because the church has lost its glory. Because the church has lost his power. Now the call on the name of the Lord of heaven is short. So that is why. If you want to know so short that we get to heaven. Make sure the pastor is not a secret sinner. Make sure the workers they are not secret sinners. Make sure that you yourself you are not a secret sinner. So we have different kind of brethren in the church. But if false brethren they are more than the true brethren, the church is in danger. Sin always bring a man slow in God's esteem. Sin always bring a man lost in God's esteem. You know, the, the, the sinner set a high price on their side. I am like this, I am like this, I am like this. But God have a long thought of him. God look with him with a despicable eye. In the book of Psalm 14, verse 3. Psalm 14, verse 3. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that dwells good. No, no, not one. To understand better on how a sinner is brought low in the account of God. The Lord compare a sinner to dross. The Lord compare a sinner to dross. And the Lord compare a sinner to shaft and to a pot boiling with scum. And the Lord compare a sinner to a dog. He compare a sinner to a rebellion. He compare a sinner to witchcraft. 
They compare a sinner to property of destruction. Listen to me carefully. Sin always brings a man lost in his mind. Darkness will be upon the face of his mind. Their mind will be enveloped with ignorance. Sin always brings a man's law in affliction. Adam's sins brought him low. He has power over the animals, over the bears, over the snake, over the trees, but the day he sinned, he was sent out of the garden. That when he plants something, the birds will come and destroy it. But from the beginning, it was not so. He has power over them. He has authority over them. And the sin banish me banish him away from paradise because the garden of elder was like paradise to him that time and that is why sin always may go to cut people short it always may go to cut people short in spiritual liberties sin is the womb of sorrow and it gives birth to death. Sin turned the body into hospital. Different disease will come. That's how we come. HIV we come. But spiritual HIV is dangerous than physical HIV. And sin always buried in. Remember how sin drowned the old world. And how the sin burned Sodom. God is angry with sin. God is angry with sin. God is angry with sin. God has sin. It's a dishonor to his majesty. It's a dishonor to his glory. It is a dishonor to his kingdom. It is a dishonor to his attributes. Sin makes Zion to seek in Babylon. He's supposed to be the head. But he was in a slavery ground. Like what was so ever that involved in sin. They will, they're supposed to be a great person. He's supposed to be a great person. But such a person, because the person involved in sin, such a person will be a slave. Sin shut up God's affection. And sin change a royal crown into filters. When King Nebuchadnezzar sinned against God, he spoke against God. I am like this, my kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. Don't say, hey, so you can compare yourself to me. I will turn your crown to filters. You will not live among human beings again. But you are going to eat and live among animals. And this happened for several years. Until when God have compassion on him, then he declared, truly the kingdom of God is from everlasting to everlasting. Sin always break in safe sadness. Be on your feet. With a loud voice, you are going to shout. Oh, Lord, my God. Take me out from the level that sin has brought me. 
Shall we begin to pray? Oh Lord my God. Take me out of the level that sin has brought me. Take me out. 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 It's us mighty name we have prayed. You can have your sin. Sin always brings intensive sadness. It put a Christian out of tune. That you won't be able to be fit for prayer and praise. They will not be consecrated or focused in a place of prayer. Because the mind is troubled. Because the mind is sinful. Because the mind has been defiled. Because the mind has been corrupt. And because of this, the heart loses focus in the place of prayer. It makes you dull even when the hot, hot message is going on, you will be sleeping. That is the result of sin. It always brings sadness to the heart. One thing I can never do in my life, which God has warned me severally, and is that sleeping in his presence is a dishonor to him. We cannot sleep before earthly lawyer. Army is talking with you, you are dozing, he will slap you. You stand before your earthly judge, you are sleeping they will think they will do for you. But many Christians, we used to look down on God. The day I slept in the presence of God, that day before all the congregation, I fell. And the altar fell on me. And my mouth was become swell. My, my, my lips swell up. And God said, let, let in, in, in your life, you will never sleep in my presence again. So, it is a dishonor. These are some of the little, little things that we thought, and God should be able to know that I'm tired. Sin always brings sadness to the heart. Whenever there is sin in the church, it always destroys the glory of God. And we so ever that involved in sin, whenever he is in the church, guilty will be there, sadness will be there. If they ask him to pray, he won't be able to have passion to pray because he committed sin before he come to the church. It will create fear into the heart that you begin to imagine, I thought this man ever see me. Sin always bring a man low spiritually. If you are in 100 degrees and you sin against God, you will come down to lower degree. I love to share my life experience with people. So that they can learn from it. When I gave my life to Christ, I was so passionate for God. I spent my days in the bush praying and singing him. I, I always claimed the book of John 2, 228 on my life. Lord, this is your promise for the youth. This is a promise for the youth. Fulfill this in my life. I will go into the bush. By the time I finish from school, I will go into the bush praying, Lord, confirm this word in my life. 
before I know it the Lord began to visit me in every Saturday of the week every Saturday of the week I want to use this as illustration the sin always bring a man low spiritually let's close our eyes father take me out from lower spiritual level please take me up to higher level i want to love you with all my life and so and strength in jesus mighty name we pray Every Saturday unfailingly, the ancient of day will come, he will sit with me and talk with me like a father and son. I was given a great grace that on Friday, from Monday to Friday, people will come to me and said, I want you to ask the Lord this, I want you to, to ask the Lord this, and on that Saturday, I will present the question to the Lord. He will tell me the answer. John Monday, Friday, I will answer. One day, we will be able to go to the Lord. We will be able to go to the Lord. We will be able to go to the Lord. I allow sin in my life. When people are talking with me, I begin to look at the person. How many times have you even seen the Lord? How many times do you talk with the Lord? Please come to the Lord. 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 Please come to the Lord that I don't even know what to ask again. But I allow pride in my life. I begin to look down people. That is why if I see pride in the life of any Christian, I always pity them. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, on a faithful Saturday, I went to the presence of God as usual. And I said, Lord, today, this is what I want you to tell me. I didn't smell his presence. Nothing happened the following week I thought maybe he doesn't want to come the same thing happened the third week the same thing happened the fourth week the same thing happened the fifth week the same thing happened I went into 99 days fasting and prayer nothing happened he said I have forgiven you grace is gone be on your feet and start this prayer the sin of pride that want to destroy my life the sin of pride that want to pull me down the sin that want to take me to hell oh lord give me victory over you shall I beg you to pray In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you, you can have your seat. I pleaded, I begged, I begged, I said, why can't you pity me? Why can't you have mercy on me? I'm sorry, it is because I'm a little boy. Because I have no Lord that is why. Said the grace is gone. The grace is gone. After some years, then he said, don't worry, I will visit you every month. Now, now, let, me ask you this, let me ask you this question. Between every month and every week, which one is better? Sin always bring a man low spiritually. It bring a man's heart to be sealed with iron. It always killed conscience. That time I didn't know that even if they said, I, I'm sorry my brother, you know, I noticed something, pride. I said, well, I don't have pride, thank you. Because the conscience is dead. And it leads to spiritual sluggishness. When you have been brought down 
born spiritually. No, someone will steer you off. Because your conscience is dead already. Because your feeling is lost already. You are not sensible of sin again and even the wrath of God that is coming upon you. You may ring a bell of death to the person yet the person will remain asleep in his sin. Sin always brings a man low spiritually. That if you carry the fire and the fire is burning and people can be able to say this is a different person now. In last year I know that this person is, is very cold. But I notice a fresh fire in his life. All of a sudden you see that the person is more cold than before. The person has involved in sin. Sin always bring a man low in temptation. When they are tempted, they can be able to resist because they are already the victim of Satan. When the devil said, cause the cause. When the devil said, abuse the abuse. Because the sin has brought them low. And sin always bring one low in abandonment. It makes God to abandon. It makes God to forsake. The day something fell, the spirit of God departed from him. The day King Saul sin, the spirit of God departed from him. The day so many people involved in sin, the spirit of God departed from them. There are so, so men of God that God has departed from them because they committed immorality, because they committed sin, and the power of God is no longer there, and they begin to involve in occultic work in order for the people not to discover that the power of God has gone out of their life. One day shall be one So that people will not say, ah, ah, I know this man is full of fire before what is going on. There are so plenty of them in hand. But they will use pregnant women for sacrifice. Some of them will carry them, they will carry sacrifice naked. Some of them would have used baby for sacrifice before a crusade. So that miracles and signs and wonders can follow. Why? Because God has departed from them. Sin always bring a man into the bottomless peace. The more you see, the more hell is closer to you. And when you go to hell, you shall be separated from the sight of God. And hell has a diverse city of torment. They have diversity of torment. Hell is a place of total darkness. This darkness is enough to torment. The darkness is different from the darkness of the world. The darkness is very thick that you can touch it. And there are bones and shells in hell. People are being tied down with shells. In hell, inside horrible fire. And the worms that were eating the body of people there never die. And their conscience is always tormenting them. 
Listen to me. Nebuchadnezzar fear the furnace is nothing to be compared to the fire of hell. The fire of King Nebuchadnezzar is just a penitent fire. In comparison to the fire of hell. And the torment of hell shall be in every part of the body and soul. The body shall be tormented. The body cannot that cannot bear heat or cold on earth shall now swim inside unquenchable fire. When there is heat, you say, hey, hey, this this heat is too much. When there is cold, you say, ah, ah, this cold is too much. Imagine the same body and so it's going to be inside liquid fire. Their eyes shall be tormented with the sight of devils. Their eyes shall be tormented with the sight of devils. The more they see horrible demons, the ones that have three heads, the ones that have seven heads, the ones that have eyes at the back of the head, the ones that do not have eyes at all, but ordinary mouths, but can see, can see where you are, can see where you are centered. By the time they see that, they will be scared. Their eyes will be dropping with tears. And their, their tears is not white tears, it's a green tears. Their ears shall be tormented with the hideous shriek of the dam. That's the more they hear the screaming, the more they cry. And their tongues shall have enough water enough fire to drink. All the powers of their soul shall be tormented. The mind shall be tormented with displeasure. When they see horrible things, ah, they begin to cry. Their memory will remember the mercy that has been abused. And the means of grace that they have slighted. And the heaven that they have forfeited. The conscience shall be tormented with self-accusation. Why do you have to come here? Why do you have to come here? You are warned. You are told. You are told that this place is a horrible place. Why do you have to come? They begin to cause themselves. They cause the day that they give birth to them. I, I wish I were not born at all. And the wicked shall not only be forced to behold the devil, but they shall live in the dens of fire with the devil and the devil is going to split fire on their face. He will split, split fire out of their eyes. You are the one that called fire on me on earth. You are the one that used to set Holy Ghost fire. You are the one that used to sing Holy Ghost consumed them by fire. It is now time for me to consume you with fire. You are the one that said, I must devil, I must devil under my feet. He will not begin to march you under his feet. But I show a Lord who marry my feet as Satan. He will remember you, he will remind you all the song that you have sung. He will remember, he will remind you all the song that you have sung. He will bite and bite and torment and torment day and night forever and ever and ever and ever. And the person will 
never come out from the fire. And the most horrible thing that I don't know I heard about hell is because the torment has no end. But here on earth, there is no end. 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 There is of Satan inside unquenchable fire and there will not be food no water they shall be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and another horrible things about her the pain does not pause if a man is on pain on earth if a man is in pain on earth maybe you are having severe headache they will say I advise you my friend go and stay by the time you wake up the headache will go but in how there is no sleep their infernal pains is going to be forever and ever and ever they are going to pass through sharp and dangerous torment and there is no drop of water to cool their tongue listen to me carefully Sin is dangerous than we think. It's not the father that we can play with. It's not a father that we can play with. It is horrible. It is dangerous. It is dangerous than acid of the earth. Listen to me. In hell. The ungodly shall be dragged into their portion by hell jailer. Just like on earth, if a criminal has been executed, and they said, Here is the judgment, hang him, make sure he is dead. Then the water is going to drag him. Follow me. Likewise in her. The moment a sinner dropped to her, the demon that has been assigned to monitor his life on earth will run to meet him. And the demon will run and begin to drag him. Let's go. Who cannot resist him? Oh, the Because their palm is full of thorns. When they hold your hand, the thorn is going to penetrate into your body. You can't be able to say, No, I'm not going. Because the more they are speaking with you, if you see the old dust that is coming out of their mouth, you will nearly faint. You that cannot endure the, the, the odor of excretion on earth. Uh, you that if somebody messes you, you will, you will close your mouth, you will close your nose, but in high, you can not close. If you close, it can still enter. Every part of the body can perceive all those in hand. And if the ice is going through pain, the whole body will go through pain. And in hell, there shall not be anyone to sympathize with the damned. When somebody shall die, they will say, oh, sorry, God will do it again, don't worry. You know, God is, but in how 
There is no sympathize. God will not pity them. He will look at their calamity and will laugh. Because he has called and they rejected. Because he has counseled them, but they will never listen. Therefore, they shall cry, God shall laugh at them. Jesus will not pity them because they have slighted his blood. And now the blood of Jesus will begin to cry on them for vengeance. The angel will not pity them. The angel will say, I can still remember in 2015, I was sent to go and warn him, but he never listened to me. I remember in 2016, I was sent to go and warn him, but he never listened to me. The saint in heaven will never pity them. The father will never pity his son in heaven. And the wife will never pity her husband in her. The reason is because their glorified, their glorified body has been perfectly subjected to the will of God. And therefore, when they see the will of God being executed, they rejoice. The father will see the son inside her fire. He will say, Hallelujah, Hosanna to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, because there is no single love in hell. Listen to me carefully. That sin you are committing. If you know where that sin is taking you to, I know you will have stopped it. But you thought sin is like a ball that you can play with. But it is not so. In the book of Ezekiel 32, verse 27. Ezekiel 32, verse 27. The Bible says, And they shall not lie with the, with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which have gone down to hell with their weapon of war, and they have laid their sword under their hair, but their iniquity shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the Almighty in the land of the living. <laughs> Ti awan alagbara, ti o shibu ninu awan alay kola. Ti wan sokale lò, ti ikoku kwe lu i hamora ogu wan. Wan ti fi, i da wan ron, ori wan, shugan. A shede de wan yo wa lori e gugun wan. Bi wan ti le jè, e ru awan alagbara, ni ilè alaye. Why is it the sin must bring a man low? Gine re di ti e shè wadapi mwe e nyo wasile. Because sin is a disease. Tori pe anu ni e shè jè. When cancer gen. Into the body, it's going to bring the body low. The body will not have enough strength again. When there is ulcer in the body, the body will not have enough strength again. Likewise, when there is sin in your life, your spiritual strength will go down. Your spiritual muscles shall be cut off. Your spiritual power shall go out of you. Sin bring a man low because the sinner enter into war with God. They trample upon God's Lord and crosses his will. If God is of one man, the sinner will be of another man. He does all he can do to speak on God. Oh. And this signifies rebellion. And God will never allow his creation to rise against him in arms. He will pull the sinner down and bring him low. Because God is a 
mighty of mighty. And when God rests you with your sinner, He's going to tear him apart. And it is, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is good cool to fall into God's hand when God is a friend. But it is a fearful thing to fall into God's hand when God is enemy. Sin brings a man low because the sinner always labor to bring God low. He has no thought about God. The slight is sovereignty. He questioned his truth. He looked upon all God's promises and said, this one is false. The Bible is false. The Bible is a scam. A boy said, if at all, if, if I can see somebody that wrote this Bible, I will jail him. If I can see the author of this Bible, I will deal with him, I will kill him. And the mother said, Hey, my son, it is a fearful thing to fall into God's hand. Woman, take that aside a minute. If I see the author of this Bible, I will kill him. Mama, Way, going back to the college, he had a very terrible and fatal accident. He was rushed to hospital. His friend followed, they, they went to shake him. This boy was godly from the beginning. But when he went to college, they corrupt his knowledge and manners. And they polluted his mind. And all of the sudden, the demons arrive in the hospital room. Only him could be able to see them. He cried, they have come to take me. Who are they? They are horrible. They are so fearful in appearance. Dressed with damage of black. And he begin to cry. I can feel the fire. I can feel the fire. I need water. I need water. Water. And it died. There is a physical manifestation that they have come to drag him to hell. So listen to me carefully. Those of you that used to question biblical truth. How can God say? How can God say? How will God say this? God says you should not keep malice. You said, How can God say this? And God should be able to understand how this man badly hurt me. God said the woman should not dress ungodly, a man ungodly, and you said, ah, ah, God should be able to understand the system in this generation. God says you should not behave like a dog sleeping with one man to another. You said, ah, ah, God sees that I have no sponsor to sponsor my education. Therefore, I have no option to do that. Hey, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Sin brings a man's law because sin is the only thing that God is quarreling with. And because sin has posed one to the cause of God. Sin is an account that always bring troubles. I know you know the story I'm talking about. When a can sin against God, then he took something from the camp of the enemy and brought it to the camp of 
the shield of Israelite, they become defeated before a small country. And since the word on fire, and since always the red the, the, the strength of, of, of a believer. Listen to me carefully. Sin does not only bring people low, but it makes God to have no delight in the person. Because sin is, is working contrary to the will of God. And Therefore, sin always makes God to walk contrary to his people. Sin has brought this nation low. We are falling on, we are falling down, if not collapse. Immediately when the new president enters, they prostitute the open free service to people come, come. The change is coming, the change is coming. People go to be a palo and now God's judgment has come. Because when They begin to turn on all 
But to some take pride in their duties. And some take pride in their grace. They look down on weak believers. They make too much stress upon their grace. He thought he had more grace than others. He leaned more on his grace than on Christ's grace. Listen to me carefully. If you are living a sinful life, if you are living a sinful life, if you are living a sinful life, that is why you are down spiritually. For the iniquity God has brought them low. And there are different type of carnal pride. Some are proud of their bodies because they look so beautiful. They can spend long hours before mirror. So I am beautiful like this. If they are passing by and they see a mirror, they will go back and say, wow, what a beautiful girl, what a handsome man. The time they are supposed to spend in prayer, they spend it in imagining their beauty. And then when they look at others that they are not says, don't God created everything, everybody beautiful. But they look at some people and said, I am more beautiful than this person. I am more handsome than this person. Look at him, look at him. Hey, that will take you to hell. Some are proud of their estate. Because they have house. Because they have car. Because they have complaint. Because they have money. They begin to look down on others. Who are you to talk with me? Do you know how many people I am ruling? Do you know the people that are under my control? They are proud of their estate. Come to my house. Come and see the shack in the room. Come to the house. Come and see the structure that I put down. And you have mouth to talk with me like that? Do you think I am your mate? It is because you are a sinner. You are a sinner, that is why. And listen to me. Another sin that has brought many low. It is the sin of the neglect, negligence of family worship. Learn, let me ask you. Husband and wife and children when last do you do family devotion together new husband when last do you open your bible and say my wife this is what the bible is talking about this is what the bible is talking about when last do you sit down your children and you open the Bible to them? I thought you should be able to understand. I'm so busy with God's work. I'm so busy with office work. Listen to me. If you do not train your wife the will of God, if you do not should not the will of God, you are on your way and you are preparing your family for damnation. Oh, yeah, call you, you pay a woman, you put me show you at if we share any go to Okubako, I want more at your word any or no, no, oh, I know you're not a little see the and now your children do not have any knowledge about God by our mother. Why no, you're going to call on because you do not train them with the Bible. Oh, if you be the only time or the only thing you will tell them is. You are crazy. You are fool. You are this. By the time you get to the church, you behave so gentle, and the, your children will say, "Ah, uh -uh. is this the the 
daddy that I know at home, is this the mommy that I know at home that used to call me a crazy boy, a fool boy? And look at how she's singing. Look at how she's praying. Ah, uh, this, this man is deceiving himself. <laughs> When your children run to you and say, Mommy, mommy, I don't understand any this place in the Bible. You said, Go away. Don't you see that I'm very busy? So I'm gonna start to work with mommy, mommy, but daddy, daddy, and woe it be by new people, call my jemmy, and we pay a coral share shake more shit on the one. Your son is listening to ungodly music, you know. This is ungodly music. You didn't tell him. And you say you are going to heaven. Which heaven are you going? Oh, more than boy, I get to go for long. Oh, see more. She got all kidding. Oh, so for all we put on the city of our own. It's your ball. We're going to let all your song dress ungodly. And you look at him. You can't talk to your son. Don't you know you are preparing that son to hell? And you yourself, you are on your way to hell. Oh, more than we more about Shabbat. More I get to go for all long. Oh, see, Lee. Oh, kidding. Oh, more. Oh, you notice your children has been speaking a few day language. And there is no cursing and by biting in their mouth. They cause beside you. They abuse beside you. And you keep quiet. And you thought you are going to heaven. Which heaven are you going? Is it the heaven of God? Is it holy heaven? Is it righteous heaven? That is not the heaven you are going. The only heaven that I know. There is no filthiness there. The people that are there, they train their children the will of God. I know not the sin that has brought many low. It is covetousness. And not that one that has brought many loads. Barrenness under the midst of grace. Barrenness under the means of grace. They have been hearing about sanctification. Yet their heart remain unsanctified. The pastor has said, this is how to resist the devil. This is how to go against the devil. And yet, whenever they will come, they will never make use of the, of the, of, of the pattern that has been revealed unto them. Such a person is not a child of God. They have told you time after time, you must be humble. You must do this. You must do that. And you want them to call you and say, come and do it before you will do it. Ha! Such a person is on his way to hell. Immorality has brought many laws. Immorality of feeling. Immorality of heart. Immorality in performance. This has brought many laws. The loss of the heart, masturbation has brought many laws. And because of this, the strength is gone. And listen to me. Immoral person will take a shortcut to hell. And another sin that has brought many law is unbrotherly love. Um, brotherly love. I see fair. No love. No unity. You see your brother suffering. He does not have. And you, you have in your pocket. You can't give him. And you say you are going to heaven. Have you not read it in the Bible? That this is an acceptable religion. To visit the widows and the motherless, the fatherless, and the poor in their affliction. Oh, 
This person does not have anything, and you, you have money. This person does not have clothes. You have clothes, and yet you refuse to do that. You are not a Christian. And you Listen to me. Love with the, on, 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 hatred will take many people to hell. It is not until when you say I hate you. It is not until when you say I don't love you. But in your actions, in your manner, it shows that you do not have real love. Such a person is a sinner. And we have have swearing. Little thing you said, I swear to God who made me. 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 I If I am lying, let me go to hell and you are even lying. To my fellow Mopa, General Paddy, you are the Pantoto. There is a great mischief in sin. Sin always bring a person's load. Therefore, let us run away from sin. How can you be able to live a victorious life How can you be able to live a victorious life when sin has brought you low? We massage the cause of our trouble. The reason why we are such a problem, we massage it out. And the sin that brought us low, we massage it out. We must justify God. We must not justify ourselves. Because if we justify ourselves, we cannot receive forgiveness. Let us bring ourselves low in humiliation. And let us be on our knees for prayer when we have sinned against God. And let our faith be high that God can forgive me. And labor to be better when you have been brought low. When you are now low spiritually, and you have not confessed your sin, and you discover uh, uh, my, my spiritual life is still the same, you must labor to be better. How can you know when you are better? When we see more of God's holiness, when we have clearer insight of ourselves, when our heart has softened, when our will has subdued, that is, you, want, you don't want to choose your will, you want to consider the will of God first. And when our sin is purged out, and when our heart are more unglued from the world, and when we produce more appetite for God's world, that is when we are better. That is when we are increasing. And when our lead, when our time to for heaven is more confirmed. I am going to heaven. I am going to heaven. Then you can see it in your character, in your manner that yet truly I'm preparing for heaven. When we grow more fruitful in grace, it means that in the, the, the position that uh, the sin has brought us, we are now growing up. When we learn to bless God in our affliction, 
face the person beside you. Make sure you face the person. Make sure you face the person. If the person is sleeping, tap the person. Tell the person, listen to me carefully. And you are going to tell this person this. If sin will bring us low, I, I, I can't hear your voice. Let us have hatred to sin. Pursue sin with holy malice. And you must be quick to ask for forgiveness of sin. Oh, sini lati ma tete ma bere fu idari je sere be on your feet e dide duro be on your feet dide duro as we are asking for forgiveness of sin ba se bere fu idari je sewa i want our sister to come and sing that song for us again fe kara bere wa pa to wa ba ko orin inu we en le kan si more holiness give me iwa mi mo si fi fun mi begin to confess your sin confess your sin ma jo won sere tell the lord you are sorry for what you have done so koluwa mo bebe o gbogbo ti mo ti se for it you have committed ignorantly. I want to this share. No, no, you are open. I'm a Begin to confess. Confess. I, 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 make sure you pray from the bottom of your heart. You to think of that horrible fire. Do you want to go there? Begin to confess your sin. you to be holy. 
God wants you to be righteous. God wants your heart to be pure. God wants your dressing to be holy. God wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to serve Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth and in complete holiness. For without this, you cannot see the Lord. Without you doing the necessary restitution, you cannot see the Lord. Your tongue must be free from speaking deceit. Your heart must be free from taking bribe. God wants you to live in complete holiness. For without this, you cannot go with the rapture. You must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. For this will enable you to live a victorious Christian life. Join the Overcomer's Bride of Christ as you are going to listen to the word that is going to prepare you completely for the rapture. Join us and the Lord who is able to do all things to sanctify you holy and prepare you unto his coming. Live a godly life. Live as saints in this world of sin. Be blessed with this message. It's going to help your work with the Lord. You will never regret knowing this message. For this message will save your soul. It's going to deliver you from the power of sin. It's going to deliver you from the power of darkness. For this will help you and encourage you and help you in your journey to heaven. Don't be the only one to listen to this message. Share it with your friend. Share it with your family. Share it in your church. And revive your church for the Lord. For you know that the day of the Lord is at hand. And the Lord shall come like a thief in the night. On that glorious day, only those that live in holiness, holiness within, Holiness without, holiness in language, holiness in character, holiness in behavior, holiness in dressing, holiness in the heart will be able to go with the Lord. Prepare for the Lord today. Put on the whole armor of the Lord. Take time to study your Bible. And the God of peace shall help you in your journey to heaven. Join the Overcomers Bride of Christ Worldwide Ministry as you are going to listen to the message that is going to help your work with the Lord. And it's my earnest prayer for you that God is going to open your spiritual insights so that you will see the things of the Spirit and the Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed with this message in Jesus' name.